Hey everyone, Theos on coming to chat, and today super excited to be continuing our series on crypto and how it relates to VR and AR. And Play Key is something I'm super excited to be talking to you about. It's something I'm super excited to see you progress into the future. And if there's any other cryptos that you want to see covered on this channel, make sure to leave a comment below and I'll try to get to as many as I can, do the research and make a video like this. And before I dive into this video, I do want to mention that this video does contain my opinions based on research I've done into these crypto technologies. So don't take it as financial advice. And that I really, really recommend you go through, read white papers, do research on what other people are thinking before you actually go in and invest. And also for full transparency, I do own PlayKey, but I'm putting this video out more to spread information on what PlayKey is. So with that said, let's go ahead dive into what is PlayKey. You can see here, it's a basic diagram as far as how the PlayKey network is structured. And the short discovery of what PlayKey is, is it's a decentralized cloud gaming service. Now, what does that mean? So let's just walk through kind of the steps of what an end user would do. So let's go ahead, imagine ourselves as a game player. I go to PlayKey, I download their client, and I say, I want to play maybe Doom. So I hit Doom, I start up the service. What that does is that input then goes from my device, maybe that's a MacBook, maybe that's a mobile device, something that's low end, goes through PlayKey, that sets it up to send a miner, which in this case is really just a computer, that goes ahead, pops up Doom, and just starts sending frames over. So the miner in this case, just really any old computer, that's not old computer, but a really high-end computer, renders out the images for Doom. That Those Doom images get downloaded by the player, and as I continue to play the game, maybe I'm shooting, maybe I'm just moving my mouse around, that input again gets sent to the miner and creates this cycle of actually simulating a game over the network. And the reason you want to decentralize this is it yields faster frames per second because Maybe my neighbor is the miner in this case, and that allows me to just have a short network transfer. And it's probably best if I actually go ahead and draw this. So let's just draw this. Maybe this is my city block. And here is C1. So this is me. Now, typically in AWS, I would maybe have a AWS, which is a server. Maybe they're at the end of my city block. And so in the normal use case, I would have to go to my server that's in a centralized location and go back and forth and communicating with it. And so that is a pretty long distance. But now maybe I have my neighbor here and I have neighbor two here. And using PlayKey, maybe they're both miners. I can actually go ahead and talk to these guys to play my game. And this is just typically how any decentralized network work. But the, the reason this is important is because the distance here is actually lower, which means that because the speed of light is always a limiting factor, I can I have a less download time between me and my neighbor than me, me and the server, which allows me to get a higher frames per second faster. So that's the beauty of a decentralized network and specifically in the case of cloud computing because now maybe neighbor here wants to talk to another neighbor and then that, that just creates the cycle of um, having shorter download times. So that's one of the reasons why you might wanna have a decentralized version of this over a centralized version of a cloud gaming. So Plicky does have a working alpha and I'll go ahead and put a video right on the screen for you guys to watch right now. I should mention it is centralized, so all the servers are located in Europe. It's one of the reasons why if you look in the upper right hand corner, which represents the frames per second that I'm playing at, it's set at 12 and that's just purely because I'm in North America. So I have a long network travel time all the way to Europe, but 12 frames per second isn't really too bad if you actually think about it. That said, if you actually decentralize it, have servers in North America, it would be a lot, lot faster. But needless to say, if they do have a working alpha, so anyone can go ahead and try that out. Now in their working alpha, they do have a bunch of different demos to play. So you can try Doom, Hitman, Civ, there are a few others out there. In the video, I'm just playing Civ 
And the demo is actually fairly short, it's probably about 10, 15 minutes, but it gives you a sense of how their actual network can handle the load. In the case of Civ, it really doesn't matter too much because it's turn-based and really high-end graphics, so that, that helps actually out in one of, the, one of the really good use cases of PlayKey. Moving on to kind of what more PlayKey is, it's partially open source, so unlike traditional cryptocurrencies, it is you only see the ICO code, so pretty much just the token code, not the streaming code. So that's just something to keep in mind as far as um, why to use PlayKey, because it's going to be a little harder for others to copy it. But I also do think that it's, it's not in the spirit of crypto, so there are pros and cons to that. And last but not least, this is an ERC-20 token running on Ethereum. So that means that uh, it's open to the scalability, hackability of Ethereum and how that progresses. Uh, if you really believe in e Ethereum and ERC-20 tokens, then it's probably something that you should pretty much just consider any ERC-20 token. So that's just kind of high level summary of what PlayKey is. Now let's look a little bit at the roadmap. So basically what we have here up until 20, end of 2017 is basically they were working on their centralized version. So what does that mean? So they started development, built the cloud service with their own servers, and they scaled that up to 2.5 million users. And that's really an amazing feat because that's a big chunk of gamers as a whole. If you think about that in terms of PS4 sales, that's about 10%, about 5 to 10% of the number of PS4 players in the world. So really, really amazing feat here as far as getting a lot of gamers to use their service. Moving into 2017, they started getting their ICO set up and having an actual ICO to sell their tokens. I'll dive a little more into the token economics in a little bit, but needless to say, they set that up and by the end of 2017, they got it on exchanges. So you can see that right here. It's also on Ether Delta if you want to use that service. And they're getting smart contracts set up to connect miners and gamers. And moving into the rest of 2018 and really into the future here, let me pull that up. They're putting out the application to actually connect the miners and gamers together. So that's their application. They're talking a little bit about, oops, the pricing policy. And the pricing policy here is basically how much they're gonna charge gamers and how much of a rev share are they gonna get from miners. And I'll talk again more about that in a couple of slides from now because it's actually a really important thing as far as the value of the play key token. But rest of 2018 here is just more support services for miners going here, adding NVIDIA, AMD GPUs, getting about a thousand miners by the end of Q4 in 2018, which will basically allow a lot of gamers to actually go through and start using the service, which is a big, big deal. And the rest of basically 2019 and beyond is getting their third party gaming service integration, which allows them to get a bunch of different games to integrate into PlayKey so that gamers have a wide variety to choose from. And so that actually is a really, really big deal and involves getting in touch with a lot of game developers, making sure they're on board and making sure their games are on board to have cloud gaming actually set up. So this is probably the biggest part of their roadmap that's kind of the least defined in my opinion. So that's a little bit about the roadmap. Again, there's several, quite a few unanswered questions, but a lot of that kind of involves around how much you think the team can deliver. And if you're looking at any crypto, teams are the way to go as far as making sure that someone can actually deliver on it. Now, the high level thing here is that they've all pretty much worked at a company called Enaza, and this specialized in, and this is straight off of LinkedIn, in a digital content for ISPs. So video, music, games, any of that stuff, getting that streamed through ISPs. So they have quite a bit of experience as far as streaming is concerned, as far as really all of the kind of the network oriented stuff is concerned. So that's really, really promising. And that's kind of the meat of this project anyway. And so you can see here, there's quite a bit of their team. A lot of those are from NASA. You have some blockchain engineers here at the bottom who are actually working on the Ethereum integration. So that's obviously important. So they have their bases covered. And I think that is going to set them up for success in my personal opinion. If you want to go ahead, check out their team, you can go ahead and do that. I'll leave a link to the website in the description. You can go ahead and 
click on really <laughs> any of these things. And in the white paper, they have a specific description for everyone. So again, highly, highly encourage you to take a look at the team to, to make your own decisions as far as whether or not they can to actually succeed. So the last thing I want to talk about as far as analyzing Flaky is the token value. So as any utility token is concerned, you have a simple supply demand graph. So supply here in the case of Playkey is actually the number of miners who can go ahead and support this infrastructure. Demand is the opposite, where it is the number of people who are actually going ahead and willing to play games on this service. Now let's break that down a little bit as far as actually calculating a price. So this is straight off of the white paper. You have the actual value of any token is going to be the instant demand. So that's right here divided by the total supply, which in the ICO was a million tokens. So what's the instant demand? So the instant demand here is the number of players who are playing at any given time. So the example that is used is 20,000 players and how much they're willing to play for say a monthly service. So let's say it's kind of like Netflix and this is $10. So then if you multiply those together, you're gonna get $200,000 coming in per month. And so that makes your instant demand and you can then go ahead and divide by the total supply and you get $2 per token. So if you're investing in these, these play key tokens, what you're investing in is the ability to say that the number of players is going to go up or that price is going to go up because that will create the, the, the actual demand shortage that is needed and the supply, or sorry, not the demand shortage, the supply growth that's needed to match the demand and increase the price. So that's the kind of economics here, but you can see I added this uh, little, little asterisk here. The reason for that is, as I mentioned before, PlayKey takes a rev share cut. Now, what does that mean? Here's a quote out of their white paper to, to actually explain it. With every transaction from a gamer to a miner, the PlayKey Foundation received a rev share on the development of this service. Currently, they're considering 25%. Straight out of the white paper. Now, what does that mean? That means that yes, even if the instant demand is 20,000, they're gonna be taking 25% of that price. It does create the same supply graph, and yes, a PlayKey token is going to have that value, but it takes 25% of the value out and sends that to play key. Now, there are pros and cons to this because the pro being that it allows play key to actually continue to do development into making sure that they get the games onto their system and they make sure that the, um, the, the service stays in stack, there's no bugs and all of that gets fixed. So it keeps them actually going for throughout their roadmap even further past 2019. The flip side is it doesn't really feel super centralized because now what it, what is happening is Playkey is taking taking a cut and they're kind of this this middleman in a sense uh, as part of their service, which again kind of defeats the whole decentralized purpose. Pros and cons. I'll let you guys choose what you guys think. Let me know in the comments because uh, it's kind of a uh, coin toss as far as what the the right answer here is, per se. Uh, I've told you guys I am invested a little bit in PlayKey, so I do think this won't be a huge deal in the near term. It might have issues in the long term. We have to wait and see. So what's my verdict? My verdict is I give this a 7 out of 10. And the reason for this is I think that the team has the ability to deliver on this 100%. They've shown they have an alpha, they've shown they can make a pretty successful streaming service, and they have all the partnerships in place to actually succeed as far as getting this out to users and getting the right games in place. The reason it's a seven out of 10 is what I said at the end, which is purely because if they continue to get money and if you think long-term picture, there are concerns there. They need to, to prove that they're able to tackle those concerns and make sure that the, the network truly does feel decentralized. And based on what they've said, that's going to be a little hard feat to do, but uh, I'm a little patient and I'll wait and see what happens throughout 2018. Let me know what you guys think of PlayKey. I think I'm personally really, really excited on this project and we'll wait to see where this goes. And again, if you have any questions, comments, definitely leave those in the comments below. Also, if you're new to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button to expect more videos like this and other content in VR and AR. 
And if you really, really like this video, go ahead, smash that like button, because that helps us out a ton. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.